welcome to another episode of Frankly Speaking Sports. I'm your host, Larry Frank. want to welcome you to a great, great show that we have planned for you today. Uh, just minutes away from speaking to uh, a gentleman who covers the Los Angeles Angels. He writes about them. He has his own podcast, Jared Timms. He'll be joining us to talk some baseball. But before we get into that, uh, part of the show, I want to first of all start out with some upsetting news out of the NBA that uh, Hall of Fame center Wes Unseld, who led Washington to its only NBA championship, has died at the age of 74. He was one of two players in NBA history to win the Rookie of the Year and MVP in the same season. I believe that was 1969. You know, I remember watching Wes with the um, with the Bullets. They were back then. And, you know, when he used to play the Knicks and stuff. And just a big, big man who played a great, great game of basketball. So, once again, Wes Unseld, the Hall of Fame center for the Washington Bullets, has passed away at the age of 74. Um, in some Arkansas basketball news, we do have some news out of the University of Arkansas that assistant coach Chris Crutchfield has accepted a head coaching job at East Central University. For those of you that are not familiar with East Central University, it's a Division II school in the Great American Conference. That job was left vacated, uh, at the end of the year when Ja Havens accepted a job at Northeastern State, which was his alma mater. And this team, I believe, had a 17-12 and 12 record in Division II. Um, and I think it was 11-11 11 and 11 in the conference. So we want to congratulate Chris Crutchfield. You know, he came over when Eric Musselman came over. And uh, he coached with him for one year, and already, you know, when great things happen with the program, people get promoted, and, you know, I'm sure Chris won't be the last one to leave uh, Arkansas for a great opportunity, and that's what Eric Musselman does. He develops his young coaches, and they go on to be head coaches. So once again, congratulations to Chris Crutchfield. And like I said, in a few moments, we're going to go ahead and have um, Jared Timms on, who covers the Los Angeles Angels. And, you know, there's been a lot of bickering still going on in Major League Baseball. Um, everybody's proposing this. Everybody's proposing that. But at the end of the day, still, unfortunately to my listeners, nothing has been going on as far as when we will play baseball. Just a lot of speculation out there about um, now you got Robert Manfred saying maybe we'll play 50 to 60 games. Now they have the owners trying to push themselves around on the players saying, well, we don't care if we even play any games. So just a lot of unnecessary bickering like we talked about yesterday um, going on in, uh, in Major League Baseball that at a time where Things are really rough in our nation right now between the COVID-19 epidemic and you have the, uh, you know, on the protests going on about the injustice that was done with George Floyd. It's just a time where people really don't want to hear about Major League Baseball, billionaires and millionaires, you know, arguing over pennies on the dollars. And once again, we talked about this, and everybody knows that, you know, I have been siding with the players. The more and more I look into this, I understand where the players come from. But at the end of the day, it takes two sides to compromise in order to get this done. And we'll talk to Jared in a few minutes in regards to... Uh, to uh, this situation and a lot of other situations going on in minor league baseball, and I'm sorry, major league baseball, as well as minor league baseball, where hundreds and hundreds of players 
have been released in the minor leagues. And obviously, this is definitely an effect of the COVID-19 epidemic and them not being able to play baseball this year. So we'll get into that as well. We'll be back right after this quick message. We're going to go to a message break now so that we can go ahead and do the interview with Jared Timms. We'll be back right after this. Times. Hi, everybody. Dick Vitale. Hey, my motivational tip of the day is dealing with tough times. You know, people in life know have tough times. How one deals with those tough times separates the person that's going to make it and a person that's not going to make it. So when things get tough, you have two choices. One, you can whine and cry and moan about what's happened in terms of things not being really giving you that positive outlook. Or number two, you can pick up the pieces of that tough times and battle and battle on. There's that saying, you've heard it often, a quitter never wins and a winner never quits. And when the going gets tough, the tough get going. And that's what a champ is. And I know you people out there that are listening here want to be champs, champs in whatever you do in life. So fight on, give your best, pursue it to the best of your ability, and don't any, let anyone ever tell you you can't be what you want to be. Make that goal realistic and chase it to the best of your ability. Welcome back to Frankly Speaking Sports. Want to remind you all that if you need or want to follow us, you can go to at Larry Frankis on Twitter. That's with the U.S. at the end. As well as follow us on our Facebook group page, Frankly Speaking Sports, and our YouTube channel, Frankly Speaking Sports, as well. Want to now take the time to introduce to you, it is my great honor and pleasure uh, to have on our Frankly Speaking Sports Hotline, he writes about the Los Angeles La- uh, Angels and their farm system. Uh, let's talk to Jared Timms. Jared, how are you doing today? I'm excited to be on, man. This sounds like a great thing that's going on here. Yeah, we have a good time on this show. Jared, I know you do a lot of work, uh, obviously, writing uh, about the Los Angeles Angels and and also their minor leagues. I, w- I want to get right into uh, the situation that has been happening all week long, and it's just a sad, sad situation about all these minor leaguers that are being released, and I'm not sure if the Angels had done so as well, but I know a lot of the teams have. They're releasing these players. What are, what are your thoughts on all these players being released from these minor leagues? Yeah, you know, I mean, you said it, you said, well, it's a sad situation that's going on here. I mean, I got, I don't like to make it personal, but I, I have a lot of friends that, that are, you know, that have been affected by this. And the unfortunate guys that I, I personally have played with because I, my playing career just ended as well. So, you know, guys that I personally played with have been affected by this. But, I mean, from an angel standpoint, I, I haven't heard too much, you know, other than what they've been doing in the front office. But, um, but yeah, you know, it's it's not, it's an unfortunate situation. I think it's the way that MLB is, you know, working their way toward, you know, cutting down the teams. And we've heard this for over the past year that, you know, the minor leagues might get cut down. And I think it's a way that you know, they're able to do it now. So. Now, what are your thoughts about all these teams? You know, they said they're going to cut over 40 teams out of the minor leagues. Uh you know, and they, you know, at all different levels. Uh, what do you think about Major League Baseball eliminating those teams? You know, it's it's tough. It's tough for those cities. You know, that's a, for a lot of those cities. That's you know, all they all they have. I mean, I'm a, I'm a big city guy. I, I live in Anaheim. You know, Disneyland, Angel Stadium. So I, I I don't I don't I've never I don't see that. The small towns, but I, I know it, it's going to affect those small towns. I, I do a, I do another podcast, um, Talking Halos, and our main guy has a team that, you know, he uh, it, 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 they're going to lose their team possibly if that's it. And he says, you know, that's a lot, you know, what the what the city's income is, and it's 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 a tough situation. And, and I mean, even when you look at teams in the Cal League, you know, like. The Rancho Cucamonga um, Quakes and Lake Elsinore Storm. A lot, a lot of the, you know that that's what that city has. You know, Lake Elsinore isn't a isn't a big big city out here. Rancho Cucamonga. I mean, 
it's a big, yeah, there's a lot of people live there and there's a lot of people live in the surrounding areas, but that's, that's the only sports team that they have, you know, it's, it takes them over an hour and, you know, especially in California traffic to get to Angel Stadium or Dodger Stadium. So, you know, that's, that's, that's what they had to work with. Uh, it's, 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 it's a very tough situation and something that's, I, I, it, it'll be rough if it happens and you know, we're just going to have to wait and see. Now, also over the past, I would say 30 days would probably be a good number. We're listening to at the Major League Baseball level when things in this nation are tough enough. You know, you have COVID-19, obviously. That goes without saying the effect that has on not just the sports world, but the nation in general. And then, of course, the recent events with George Floyd and all the protesting that's going on. And now you have Major League Baseball owners and players going back and forth and bickering over what they need. It's not whether to start a season. It's how much money each side needs before they start a season. How how much is this, you know, in people's mind going, you know, baseball, we don't care about you anymore. Your image is gone as far as we're concerned. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a, a tough situation right now with, with everything going on. And it would be... Be really nice to have baseball back and everything with with everything going on. It, it's got to be a perfect world, and unfortunately, as I said this multiple times, it's not going to be perfect. But what baseball will be, um, but I don't know how much the image is, you know, really been affected yet. It, it's going to be if you know they don't have a season that it's really going to be affected. You know, it's it, you know it, it, people are already saying, man, if they don't play this year, do you play next year? And then you already have. You know, after the 2021 season is when the CBA is up, so it's it, it, it's a tough look for, for baseball, and especially baseball not being around at this time. I, you know, it's 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 tough. <laughs> you know, it's, I'm struggling with it. Everybody's struggling with it, and if they don't have a season, that's a really really bad look on you know the players, the owners, everybody in general, not just you know one side or another. And you know, it's something that the world needs right now. It's something that you know. You can uh, look at and say, you know, it, it, it's the norm, you know, in the summer is being able to watch baseball at 7 o'clock or 12 or whatever time that the games come on at. And right now, we don't have it. And, then, you know, the world's just kind of a different place. So. Now, Jared, if I'm correct, you played baseball as well, correct? I did. I did, yeah. I played about the 20 years altogether um, from when I was four all the way to 24. finished my college career. Okay, that, and that's what I thought. I just wanted to make sure I had that right. Because I played as well, of course, a lot years before you. Uh, but, you know, what do you think, you know, as someone that played the game, no, you didn't necessarily play on the professional level, but you know enough about the game. What has to be done in order for them to come to some type of agreement so we can get this going? Yeah, you know, I think everybody's going to have to compromise a little. It's, it's kind of what everybody in the world is doing right now anyways is compromising. I think baseball's got to kind of compromise in a sense, too. You know, both the players, you know, and and the owners and, you know, Rob Manfred and, and everybody, I think everybody's just going to kind of have to compromise a little bit. Um, you know, and we've seen the players are willing to do that, and the owners and Rob Manfred might not be as, you know, able to do that, but I, I don't. You know, it's going to be it's going to have to be something that everybody's going to have to do. Is, and, I, and I've been saying this on you know different shows that I've been on. It's it's not going to be a perfect world, unfortunately. And it's it, you know the season's going to be if there is a season, it's going to be more than baseball. You know, it's going to be about giving hope back to the people. And right. you know, it's it's one of those just going to be one of those things. I think everybody's going to have to compromise, unfortunately, just just a little bit. You know, exactly how everybody else. You know, the young people are taking pay cuts to keep their jobs, and people are, you know, having to wear masks at work, or, you know, with everything going on, and it's, baseball is going to have to do that if they're going to want to play this year. Yeah, and, uh, you know, let me ask you this, because before we get into some, you know, some questions about the angels and stuff, um, your, and uh, once again, this is just your opinion, and just like I have my opinion, the leadership that Major League Baseball is currently under, meaning Commissioner Robert Manfred, 
What are your thoughts of their leadership right now? Just kind of like everybody else's leadership. You know, everybody makes good decisions. Everybody makes bad decisions. And you can say that about, you know, today's politics as well, whether you look at you know, the president of the United States or, you know, the president of another country. You know, everybody makes good mis- you know, mistakes and everybody makes great decisions. And that's kind of where Mansford and, you know, it's, if you're talking about the owners as well, that's kind of where everybody's really sitting. I know that, you know, here in Anaheim, a lot of people aren't fans of, you know, the Angels' ownership and what has been done lately and what's been kind of done in the past with Ari Moreno and, you know, his situation, the way he takes over the team and wants to win, but it's kind of shown that he wants to win, you know, out here in Anaheim. And it's the same, same thing goes for Rob Manfred right now. You know, he wants to make the game better and it may be in ways that we really don't understand. It might be more of a money standpoint and, you know, it may not be in the best interest of the fans and that, that's kind of when the fans get upset. But when it comes to, you know, the way that everybody handles things, it's just kind of the way of it, that it happens. You know, everybody makes good, you know, good decisions and everybody makes bad decisions. And I think that right now we're just kind of staying a little, a little bit more bad decisions and good decisions, unfortunately. Now, during the offseason, a lot of things happened for the Los, um, the Los Angeles uh, Angels here, um, especially it began with the guy I know very well when I lived in Tampa Bay, uh, Joe Madden, who originally came from the Angels. Now he's back as the manager. What What's the aura like in... Uh, you know, Los Angeles right now in regards to Joe Madden being the manager? It was a it was a fresh new look to things, really. I mean, you had a kind of an old school manager like Mike Sosha two years before and Brad Osmus, who was kind of the puppet behind the scenes in a sense, and or the puppet that was out you know, in the open in a sense, but he, uh, he just was kind of controlled by the front office and what they wanted to do. He had a little bit of you know, say on the field, but you know, he was controlled by the front office. And Joe Madden has come in, and he's just—he's really been a breath of fresh air. I mean, you know his antics in the clubhouse, and you know everybody's seen what he does. You know, he just kind of, like I said, brings a breath of fresh air and kind of relaxes guys. You know, and that's kind of the best way to put it. Yeah, and you know, he definitely has a way of relaxing players. And I make, you know, I can tell you that from my time I lived in Tampa Bay, he was. Just an amazing manager for the Rays. We are talking to Jared Timms. He writes uh, about the Angels and their farm system, has his own podcast, uh, Talking Halos. Um, Offensively, you look at this team, Jared, and, you know, when you look at guys like Pujols, Trout, Otani, Upton, now they also added Rendon, I mean, Offensively, this team has some guys that can produce. Yeah, you know, offensively, this is a very, very dangerous team that could put up a lot, a lot of runs. I mean, you look at the middle of the order, order and what it could be. It, you're looking at Trout, um, Rendon, Otani, who could probably be thrown in the mix when he's not pitching. And then the Angels also have Joe Adele, who's one of the top prospects in baseball and can probably put 25 to 30 home runs on the board a year when he's you know ready to go. He's still very young, but he's really close to being a major leaguer, and it wouldn't surprise me that the season got going and he's the starting right fielder for the Angels. But, yeah, you know, the, the, it's a very, very dangerous lineup, and kind of what the Angels have always really been around when they've had good teams is really a really good offense. So, you know, the, the real question marks the pitching, but as far as the offense goes, I mean, there's no better, you know, two, three, four batters in the order. I mean, you can even add Justin Upton in the mix and Albert Pujols, who um, Albert Pujols is going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. Justin Upton, I mean, everybody knows what he, he can do when he's hot. So he's, it's, a, it's a very good lineup. Yeah, and you know, you mentioned it a couple seconds ago. Obviously, offensively, they're tr- tremendous. I mean, you can't deny that. But on the flip of things, you know, they say pitching and defense wins ball game and then they're in a tough division now you know with obviously the Astros you know goes without saying um what's going on with the pitching there the starting five and the bullpen yeah you know the, the starting five is actually going to be super interesting if they're healthy I mean the health is going to be key 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 for them um 
You know, I mean, it's it, if they're healthy, they could be a you know a, a top fifteen, top ten pitching staff in baseball if everything goes well. I think Dylan Bundy getting out of Baltimore is a huge thing for him. I think he could really break out for the Angels. Um, Andrew Heaney's healthy, which all appears to be he is, to be a huge thing. If you know the young star Griffin Canning is healthy, he's been dealing with some elbow injuries, but you know, he he seems to be throwing bullpens and might be ready to go and. Big, actually huge addition is going to be Shohei Otani coming back. I mean, when you have a guy that's lighting up radar guns, I mean, pitching you know, 96 to 99, I don't know where his boss is going to be at. Post Tom and Johnny hasn't pitched in almost two full seasons, and it, it'll be interesting. But when you have a guy like Shohei Otani who has front of the line stuff coming back, I mean, that's a, that's a huge addition as well. And as far as the bullpen goes, it's really not changed too much. You know, you're going to see Hansel Robles, you're going to see Ty Butchery. Um, you know, and there's Billy Eckler does some pretty crazy things when it comes to the bullpen. He finds guys that just haven't, you know, really been there. And, you know, we saw him do it with Hansel Robles and the Mets and Ty Butchery and the Red Sox. I mean, Ty Butchery actually never made his professional debut with the Red Sox, but, you know, it was, it was one of those things where it was kind of a diamond in the rough. And they got him for King Kinsler. But, you know, if, if everything goes well, and uh, I'm pretty optimistic about this, the pitching and all together, so it'll be a, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Now you mentioned, and we've talked a couple of times about Otani. What is his health like right now? You know, with the previous injury, like you said, he hasn't pitched in two years. Um, you know, what's uh, as of today, or as of when the season was delayed? What was the status of his health? Yeah, as of today, he, you know, he's throwing bullpens at seems like 100%. Um, he posted a video on his new Instagram of him throwing to Tommy Lascella, and he looked like he was almost you know, basically throwing 100%. Um, the real interesting thing to me, and I mean, now that I'm a, I'm a pitching coach, I, I'm not a huge fan of the swift finger, but it's it, it's going to be key for him. I, I don't know what he does, because I think the split finger really affects his health and down the line, and I, I don't know if it's something that you can do where you take you know, that pitch away from him because it's you know it's such a key pitch to him. But that's going to kind of be the, the the big thing to him and his health going forward is going to be that split finger and how often he uses it because it is a devastating pitch. But it it I think it takes a lot of tear and um, wear and tear on his elbow. So. Well, we're talking to Jared Timsey writes about the Angels and their farm system has his own show with talking halos, Jared. You're a pitching coach, so let me get your perspective on this. The season obviously has been delayed. Let's say we go ahead and, as they're assuming, it's going to be probably the end of June, beginning of July, at the earliest, that we're going to stop playing baseball games again. From a pitching standpoint, with the Angels, knowing the players and the pitchers and the bullpen and the starting pitching like you do. When it comes to this season, obviously at the beginning, your starting pitchers, it goes without saying. It's common sense. They're not going to be going as far into games as they typically would be going in the month of July. Does this benefit the Angels, or do you think it is more than a, more of a negative impact on their staff? I think this actually helps them a lot. I mean, not just from an injury standpoint, because you get a lot of guys healthy, but, you know, with the way that they were working things last year, a lot of guys, you know, the Angels had the least innings pitched by starters, I think, in baseball. They almost pitched under 1,000 innings from a starter standpoint, which is crazy. They had one guy pitch over 100 innings, which was um, Trevor Cahill, and he ended the season in the bullpen, so they really didn't have anybody. Um, But, you know... Yeah, I think it helps them out quite a bit. Um, and I think that them having a, a pretty deep bullpen and a pretty actually deep starting rotation as well, where they can go and get guys. I mean, you get a guy like J.C. Ramirez or Felix Pena, who may not be in the starting rotation, but you can throw in a, you know, kind of a, a role where they can come out of the bullpen and throw three, four innings every three days or so. It's a, it's, it's guys that can eat innings for you and, they have gone with, you know, a, a um, bullpen kind of starter day where they you see a bullpen, a uh, guy from the bullpen start the game and go an inning or two. And, you know, we saw it in the no-hitter last year where, you know, Felix Pena came in and pitched eight innings after Taylor Cole started the game. So, you know, they, they've done everything.
game, you know, to kind of get around that pitching. And I, I think you know, it, it, this delay can only help them. Now, you're in an area where you have two teams. You know, I'm used to, I grew up in New York the first 13 years of my life. It was always the Mets and the Yankees. The fans would battle over. You're either a Yankees fan or you're a Mets fan. You don't like the other, and you do like the other. In L.A., you know, with you got the Dodgers, you got the Angels. How tough is that for the, you know, the Dodgers have been there. How hard is it for the Angels from a fan base perspective to be in the same city as the Dodgers? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting, definitely. Um, when you look at um, the, how, how it's laid out, the Angels are actually about, you know, 40 miles south of where the Dodgers play. And I, mean, I think the Angels actually started their career up where the Dodgers play in Chavez Ravine. But yeah, you know, I mean, you don't you don't see it too much. I mean, there's there's always going to be a lot of Dodgers fans, and personally, I love what the Dodgers do. I think they're a great organization. I think they do yeah, they do it right in every aspect, and they're a winning ball club. You look at what they've done recently. But yeah, you know, if, <laughs> it's the same way as you know Yankees and Mets or any teams that are close to each other. Um, you know, you're either Angels fan or you're either a Dodgers fan, and you know, when that rivalry happens, it's the fans love it, and you know the stadium fills up, and you know it's something that I'm really missing right now is a nice Angel Dodgers um, baseball game. Okay, a couple more questions, Jared, before we let you go. We're talking Jared Timms, uh, writes about the Angels and that farm system, has a host of the uh, Talking Halos. You've been an Angels fan. If I had to ask you, and there's been so many many great angels through the years. I mean, I can go way back to the Rod Carew days. If I had to say to you and put you on the spot, your favorite angel of all time, what would it be? Who would it be? Uh, I mean, I, I never saw Nolan Ryan pitch. He's got to be one of my favorites, but I wish I would have seen him pitch. You know, I'm young for that. Um, I grew up watching Vladimir Guerrero and Jared Weaver. Those two growing up got to be my favorite. Favorites, but man, Mike Trout watching what he does is unbelievable on a daily basis. I mean, that's something that it's it, I, I you know, it, it's almost like watching. Uh, and I didn't get to see him, but I would assume watching Babe Ruth. Or I kind of saw Barry Bonds growing up, kind of like watching one of those guys. You know, just one of the great. Uh, it, it, it is a lot of different players that I've liked, but I mean, Jared Weaver, Vladimir Guerrero, and Mike Trout are probably kind of the the guys that are my favorite and probably some of my. Um, you know, heroes growing up as an actual player. So. Is Mike Trout the best baseball player right now? Uh, without a doubt. I mean, he's a bar, a level above everybody. And I, I don't know who. I mean, Ronald Acuna is great. Cody Bellinger is great. Christian Yelich is a great player. I mean, you can even throw Max Scherzer, or Garrett Cole, or even Justin Verlander in the mix. But man, what Mike Trout does and being able to watch that on a daily basis. Is, is unbelievable. Oh, it's got to be. I, I'm sure it's special. You know, we're here on the East Coast, and when you got a name on the West Coast, still that big here on the East Coast, you know you guys see something very special every day. Uh, last question before I let you go. Joe Madden. I watched him with the Rays. I was living in Tampa when he took over the Rays until he finished with the Rays. He comes over to the Tampa Bay area from the Angels brings in a winning culture. He leaves Tampa Bay, he goes to Chicago, brings in a winning culture. He got the raised to the World Series. Unfortunately, they lost in 2007 to the Phillies. He won a World Series as we all know um, in Chicago. How long do you think it takes before Madden Magic it's uh, the Angels. Well, I mean, as far as Mad Magic goes, I think that we're already seeing it hit the Angels, you know, in the clubhouse and such. But if, as far as the World Series goes, I mean, it could be as early as this year if all things go well. I mean, I think there's still a pitcher, a real pitcher away from being a World Series contender. But I think they have the pieces to do it, you know, right now. And I think that... It could be really interesting, especially in a shortened season like this. I mean, I don't want to take any credit away from a World Series that's in a shortened season, but I mean, the, the shortened season really only helps the Angels. And 
I know it helps a lot of teams down the road, but it, it can only help the Angels, and I think that they're really close right now. If I had to give you a year, I think it would be a year or two from now, maybe 2022, 2021, maybe 2023. I think their window is probably in that area. So, it, But I think that Mad Magic is has really already started to hit the Angels, and I think you, we've really seen a difference in the clubhouse already. Well, Jared, we want to thank you so much for joining us today on Frankly Speaking Sports. I really, really enjoyed having you on. All right, it was a blast. I love, uh, I love talking everything baseball, especially the Angels. I All right, and, you me on. and maybe one time when uh, hopefully the season gets back together and we can break down some games and players that are actually playing the game, maybe we'll do that. Absolutely, yeah, no, I'm, I'd be excited to do that. All right, stay safe, my friend. From you as well, have a good day. You too. That was Jared Tams. He writes about the Angels and their farm system and is host of Talking Halos. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to Frankly Speaking Sports. I'm your host, Larry Frank. And I want to remind you all, we have several, several platforms that you can listen to our sh podcast on, listen to our interviews on, also get the latest information in sports. And we want to make sure that you're on all the platforms possible um, that you're able to go on. And it starts off, obviously, with our fastest growing Facebook group, Frankly Speaking Sports. Every night... Monday through Friday, we're going to start playing our podcast. It will be at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 8 a.m. Central, 6 Pacific, where you can now listen to our podcast in their entirety. Not only that, we have a Twitter account. If you're a member of Twitter, please go ahead and Follow us on Twitter. It's at Larry Frankis. That's with the U.S. at the end. And let's not forget our YouTube channel. We have a YouTube channel called Frankly Speaking Sports. We put all our interviews, all of our podcasts, and whatever other information we can get on YouTube you can go ahead and listen to all of the audio. You got a smart TV, you can go to YouTube and you can sit on your couch and listen to the audio through your television set. So just some great, great ways to go ahead and follow Frankly Speaking Sports. And I hope you really all are enjoying these interviews. You know, we're at a time right now that it's really, really tough to talk about you know, different sports situations going on in the world because there's not a lot of it. You know, obviously, without the games being played, the games are what allows us to debate and discuss a lot of different things. And when we don't have that, those games going on, you know, we really got to find ways to definitely get our audience engaged. And I hope some of these interviews, I mean, we talked to uh, Tim Brayton yesterday from the New York Mets. Uh, he covers them for The Athletic. And then we also, uh, you know, when you talk to Jer Jared Timms today, who covers and writes for the uh, California Angels, you know, these are some great, great professionals talking about teams out there at a time where games are not being played. So I really, really hope that uh, you uh, folks are really enjoying these interviews. And I'd love to get your feedback. You know, you can leave it on one of the platforms that I told you about. Remember, we're also on Anchor FM. We're on Spotify. We're on uh, Breaker. We're on Google. We're on a bunch of different platforms where you can listen on a daily basis at your own convenience. So please, 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 uh, you know, go ahead and join those platforms. They're all free. We'd love to have you as a member. But Jared Timms, going back to Jared, you know, we were talking about different things. We were talking about baseball and, you know, lately a lot of the topic on baseball which has been very depressing if you're a fan, and I know that, and I don't want to go back into uh, that whole scenario again and that whole story about baseball, but 
the question came up from a fan, and I'm not sure what state he was from. It was a gentleman named Oscar. Um, so I am not sure where he's from, but the question is more important than where he's from. And it was like, would it mean the same thing to win the World Series this year as in future years or past years? And at first I'm like, well, why wouldn't it be? And then I thought about it and I understood the question. It's a tarnished year. Okay, it's a year right now where we should be already playing baseball and we're not which is painful enough, but we're going to have that asterisk near this season. And, you know, the reason the season, let's remember this, the reason the season didn't start wasn't because of players and wasn't because of owners. It initially was this COVID-19 epidemic, which has been just a terrible, terrible tragedy, travesty in this world. And we understand that. But, Going now into the season, we don't know if we're going to be playing 114 games, which I doubt we will be, but that's what the players want. Or now we're starting here out of the commissioner's office. They may go 50 to 60, or they may go none at all. So, you know, it's a, it, rank, it brings up a great, great poll question, which we'll probably put on our page later on today is, Winning the World Series this year in a shortened season, will it be as special as winning it during a regular season? And, uh, you know, it's, it, I think it will be. If, if you look at it logically, these athletes love competition. They love to play the game. And, you know, I don't care if it's a 50-game season or a 162-game season. They're going to play with the same emotion, the same competitiveness, the same grind, the same grit as they should play during a regular season. And I would be very disappointed if they didn't. And a lot of people say, well, it's different with fans in the stands versus fans out of the stands. Yes, it is. It is. I don't care what anyone said. They're lying to you if they say the game is the same whether you have fans or not. It's not. The roaring of the crowd, uh, you know, just the bickering of the fans or the booing of the fans or the cheering of the fans or the rude things the fans say, it brings a different atmosphere to the ballpark. You can't deny that. But... As far as winning and losing goes, I mean, you just look at these athletes that will play in these uh, video games, how competitive they are. They want to win at everything. So, Oscar, to answer your question, I think there will be an asterisk at the end of the year, just like in uh, other shortened years. But I think the will to win and the excitement of winning will still be there no matter... No matter who wins, I think the ultimate goal is always to win, and I, I don't, I don't think there'll be any difference as far as you're winning. The city that wins, I still see them celebrating, and you have to remember, I'm one of those podcast hosts that do not think that we're going to go without fans. Now, I don't know if we're going to begin with fans. But I don't see it being long because you look at these states, and we talked about Texas uh, the other day. I think Arkansas is now allowed, and not that there's a major league team in Arkansas, but these states are starting to open up their capacity, and they're doing it anyway. I mean, you know, we're right now, people are going out, people are going out in groups. Uh, you're not hearing a lot. Every, yes, every single day are more people being effect, um, infected with this disease. Yes, that's because more tests are being done. And obviously when you have access to more tests, then you have more access to more results. And that's what you're seeing here. Don't, don't let these uh, politicians and you know, so-called experts uh, confuse you out there to make you think that it's worse than it is. And believe me. I'm not saying it's not bad. I'm not saying it's not dangerous. I'm just saying, as we've all should have seen, you know, just from weeks in the past, 
The media has a way of blowing things up and only wanting you to hear what they have to say rather than the entire facts. And you got to be able to separate that. But going back to my point, I think that when baseball starts, it's going to be very quickly where if they, if baseball is told 25% of the stadium can go ahead and be filled to capacity, they are going after that revenue. There is no doubt in my mind. All you hear the owners saying to the players right now is, we're going to lose money because fans aren't in the stands. We're going to lose the gate revenue. We're going to lose the concessions revenue. We're going to lose the parking revenue. And so on and so on and so on. The only way to make a portion of that back is going to be allowing fans in the stands. And people say, well, how safe is that, Larry? Well, it's a great question. How safe is it? But it's safe enough for the government officials and the authorities to say, fill it 25%, then it's got to be safe. Once the authorities say it, the liability issue is now over. They're doing what the government is saying. Now, if the government says no, uh, it is not okay to allow fans in, and baseball and football and the NBA and the NHL decide that to go ahead and do that, now they're at liability. But once the authorities and the government say it's okay, hey, it's free game. And if I'm the owners and the authorities are saying we can do it, then, you know... I would do it as well. Plus, the fans are far enough away from the playing field where it should not affect the players. It shouldn't. Isn't that why we're sitting the players up in the stands? If that was the case, we wouldn't sit players up in the stands. So, I, I, I you know, I ask the question is, why is it okay to sit players in the stand spread out and not and sit them six feet away, but it's not okay to do it with fans. It, it seems a little bit hypocritical to me. And some people will say, "Well, Larry, all these players are tested." Okay, if they're tested, why are you sitting them up there? You shouldn't have to sit them up there. So you know, just a lot of confusion around this whole thing. But to answer your question, Oscar. To go back to the original question, will it be the same? Yes. I think winning is winning no matter when you win. And if you're a competitor, you want to win all the time. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to Frankly Speaking Sports. I'm your host, Larry Frank. And uh, I hope you're so far enjoying this show. I know we talked about different topics. We had a... Uh, you know, Jared Tim's on earlier, and we talked a little bit about Arkansas basketball, as I always like to do. And, uh, you know, we just talked about some different things. Actually, the Arkansas basketball part was just about uh, Coach Crutchfield getting promoted. But, uh, you know, we're a week away. This upcoming Monday, six days from now, these college kids can report to the facilities and, you know, I wanted to know, I remember on a Paul Feinbaum show that uh, Sam Pittman was talking about the acquisition of Felipe. And, and also, hey, we're going to go after Malik and we're going to go after recruits. What's that relationship like and how do you manage that? Well, if you're going to go in the grad transfer portal, the number one thing, you don't want a guy to be worried about a freshman that's coming in. You know, I mean, you want a guy that has that kind of confidence that, look, this is going to be my team. Now, he's going to have to earn it just like everybody else does. But you want that confidence that, hey, I've done this before. I can come. I can help this football team. And I embrace that. And uh, that's what he did. All right. Uh, enough football questions. I want to know more about you, the head coach. So you got you got some new digs. So Sam Pittman is hoping that Felipe Franks could lead this team and lead by example. Felipe has done this before. He's mentioned, and you know he's really, really, really excited about this upcoming year. So.
So I wanted to make sure we just played that little clip for you. Uh, we didn't get as much of it as we would have liked to, but it, it definitely uh, goes ahead and tells you about the, uh, um, the excitement. You know, what are we, June 5th? So we got three months till we play Nevada on September 5th. That's the home opener versus Nevada right here in Fayetteville. So I'm really, really looking forward to that. Um, Want to thank you all so very much for joining us today. We're going to have another great show for you tomorrow. And the rest of the week, we got guests that are packed all the way through next week. So once again, we thank you very much. And we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow on Frankly Speaking Sports.